Hello everyone, this video intends to help you out with the 260 lab that you have. So let's begin by looking at the trainer board. So the image that you see on the screen may not be exactly the one that you'll be finding in the lab tomorrow, but well this is close enough. This is just a ran random image that I took off Google, so obviously there would be some differences. I think around this edge you're going to see number of uh, voltage terminals in the ones in the breadboard trainer boards that are actually in the lab this is the breadboard I'm sure you can see why it is named so and also you can look at the range of the input switches that are here so these are basically going to be the data switches for the first lab what you're going to do is actually verify the truth tables that you learned in the theory for example, for the AND gate, you know that the output is only true if both the inputs are true. So here, of course, we assume that an input of 1 or plus 5 volt here is true and 0 is false. So which means if you connect, let's say, two of the switches to an AND gate and connect the output to one of the LEDs, these are the LEDs here, then the LEDs would only light up if both these switches are turned on. Okay, so moving on, so if you take a closer look at the breadboard, you see this aisle in the middle, this is where you're going to place the ICs, we're going to talk about that in a minute. If you look at the breadboard, these rails are actually shorted vertically, as per the image, these lines are horizontally shorted. Often there are cases when these would be broken into sub-segments. But there are easy ways to understand this. What you can do is you can connect a wire from a data switch here, let's say, and then if you connect this end to a LED, then you would immediately know whether this one is actually shorted all the way or not. Okay, so again, this side is also vertically shorted, which means if you place an IC here somewhere, if you want to connect to let's say this is pin 1 and if you somehow want to connect to pin 1 then all you would need to do is put the wires in any of this any of the pins here so let's take a closer look at the ICs so this is one of the sample IC that again of course I took off the internet so this is a basically an 8 pin IC, I mean 16 pin, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, sorry, 14 pin ICs. See there's a notch on top, right? So that would actually tell you where to begin. So if you begin from the notch, I've already sh shown you pin 1 to 7, then there's pin 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14. These are the ones that you can't see. See, each of the IC packages would contain numbers. This one, for example, is an AND gate. You can see it from 7408. That's on the written on the body of the IC. You can ignore the other digits that are there. For example, SN, HC, N, which would vary depending on the family of the IC and the company that made them. Moving on. So let's take a look at the lab sheet that you have okay here we go so you see that there are numbers here 7408 for AND, 7432 for R, 7404 for the NOT 7400 for the NAND, 7402 for the NOR, 7486 for XOR and 74266X for XNOR so each of these ICs, as I said, are all 14-pin packages, but the layouts inside are a bit different. For most of them, the gates are actually downward facing. Pin 7 is the ground pin, and pin 14 is plus 5 volt. Now let me just turn off Wi-Fi for a second. Okay. So if you look here, you'll see that the 7408, which is AND, 7432, which is OR, the NOT, 
the NAND 7400 are all downward facing. The same is true for the XOR as well, which is 7486. But for the XNOR, which is 74266, this one here, and the NOR, 7402, 7402 is actually upward facing. XNOR, on the other hand, few, some of the gates, two of the gates are downward facing and the two are upward facing. So, for all of these ICs, pin 7 is where you connect the ground volt, so, I mean 0 volt, and pin 14 is where you connect the plus 5 volt. So, that is for the power for the IC. If you reverse these terminals, you'll just burn the IC. So, these are all, except for the NOT gate, all of these are quad gate ICs. I mean, what that means is they have four ICs inside, as you can see. So, for example, for the AND one, pins one and two are inputs for the first gate, and three is the output. Similarly, four is the four and five are inputs for the second AND gate, and six is the output, and so on. So, when you test an AND gate, you can use any of these gates, which basically so from the data switch of the trainer board that you have, you connect two wires to pins one and two and you connect pin 3 to a LED so then you can see the output and verify whether this is working according to the AND truth table similarly you repeat that for the other ones if you look inside the OR IC you'll see there are 6 gates there and you can see the corresponding input pins here pin 7 is still the ground and pin 14 is where you connect VCC or plus 5 volt so hopefully this would be enough to get you started on the lab and finish it in no time. Thank you everyone for watching this.